How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another Gods of Genesis video. This is part B of the 7 new upcoming SSR heroes. If you have not checked out part A, I'll put the link above and then you can go and check it out. I highly recommend you to go and take a look at it because the past 3 heroes that I've covered are all really really interesting and this video is gonna be even better. Without further ado, let's get on with it. And the first one is going to be a killer, or should I say killers. This is a new concept. This is a two-in-one hero and they go by the name of Shelia and Sierra. The name might change based on the translation. So I've heard like Serial and Sierra or something like that. But whatever it is, it's not important. What's important is this is a new dark type assassin as if we did not already have more than enough dark type damage units like uh, Lilith and Artemis and Jester. Now not only do we have a new dark type, she actually double counts as a dark and a light type hero. Let's go through her skills real quick. Okay, so we start off with a talent. When deployed, it will activate both dark and light type attribute bonus. When Shelia is dominant, damage taken reduced increases by 20%. When Sierra is dominant, damage dealt increases by 20%. Yes, that is right. They have an innate light and dark type set bonus inbuilt in one single hero. This hero is really going off on a great start. Her normal attack inflicts 100% of her physical attack damage and inflicts charm. And her first skill actually switches the leader between Shelia and Sierra. And then all buff durations will be increased by one turn. And she gets yet another turn. So setting everything else aside, this means that any debuff that you have on your hero will be reduced by one turn. And you can technically just use this skill and be sure that you are going to keep all your buffs and you're going to be able to take another turn to do whatever you need to do. So I suspect it comes with like a one turn cooldown or something like that, but here's her ultimate skill. Deals 400% of damage to one target. If Shelia is the leader, you cast magic light to herself and one ally. If Sierra is the leader, cause additional 150% of physical attack in damage. Well, physical attack means strength. And then what magic light does is for warrior and mages, they get 15% damage increase for two rounds. And for assassins and shooters, I guess rangers, they get 15% critical rate for two rounds. For guardians and supports, they both get 15% HP in terms of a shield. So I'm not sure if there's a lot of reason for you to want to be in the Shelia state. Because I cannot for the life of me understand why you want to reduce the damage that you receive rather than deal increased damage instead because you're an assassin after all. So we're going to analyze this based on Serial, who is like the dark type over here. If you take on Serial's form as a leader, you increase your ultimate's damage by 150%. And at the same time, because of her talent, she actually increases her damage output by a further 20%. Effectively, your damage output is somewhere around right under 700% for her ultimate. That is extremely huge, and especially if she gets the perk that allows her to stealth herself and increase her damage output by 20% if she's in a stealth mode, there's gonna be even more damage. However, while all this sounds really interesting and really really tempting, I for one feel otherwise. While she is good for the early game because she can give herself that 15% crit rate buff, she doesn't really have a kit like Jester where she can ignore the interceptor and go straight for their enemy's DPS. Neither does she have a killer AoE like Lilith or Artemis. So she doesn't really have a lot to bring in her kit. So I'm a little bit iffy on this. I'm not too sure whether I really want to save up for her, but she does look pretty awesome. There is that. We will wait and see if she becomes very useful in the future. And before, before that, I'm not going to do much of a speculation. Just based on the skills itself, I'm not completely interested. Next up we have Daphne who is by far I think my favourite hero in today's video. She is a water ranger so we finally have more DPS in the water team. And she is all about shooting enemies as much as she can. She has a very interesting kit similar to Artemis in a sense although slightly weaker but a lot more fun. So let's take a look at the kit. Starting with her talents, after every 4 basic attack Daphne will get a shield of 15% of her max HP. Now before you go calling this talent useless, let's take a look at her other skills. So her normal attack does 100% physical attack damage and inflicts Ice Mark. 5 stacks of Ice Mark freezes the target. For her first skill, obtain Magnetic Sniping for yourself. And what Magnetic Sniping does is every time before an enemy acts, launch a normal attack for 2 rounds. Cannot be dispelled. So basically before the enemy hits you, you will shoot the enemy once. This buff will actually last on you for 2 whole turns. So that's a lot of counter attacks going on on this hero. Moving on to our ultimate skill deals 550% physical attack damage to one enemy and remove all invincibilities, shields and undying status before the skill actually hits. So she's 
super good counter against all the tanks in this game basically because you have Valkyrie who has a shield, I mean she has an invincibility and you know yeah you have Valkyrie with shields as well and you have Dracula with the undying buff. So you could technically on the first turn one shot a Dracula without having the Dracula revive, sort of revive. And even her support skill is super good as well, okay, so you deal 420% of physical attack damage to one enemy and then you remove all invincibilities, shields, undying status before the cast of the skill. So she's gonna be a really really useful hero if you want to like have a support unit that can actually remove all these annoying buffs and actually do a huge ton of damage at the same time. Let's not forget that rangers can also hit stealth units according to the perk tree. So it doesn't matter if your Lilith is, is stealth or is invincible or whatever it is, the Lilith is going to die. So you can see magnetic sniping in action in this video clip itself. You will notice that she is just shooting every single one of them one by one and that's because when she actually successfully takes one out, before the other enemy can take another turn, she shoots the guy out as well. So obviously the damage is not going to be as much as an Artemis because Artemis talent is I think like 300% multiplier as for her it's just 100%. But I'm sure there must be some kind of special kit, some kind of uh, unique gear set where you can like allow her to remove buffs while she's like counter attacking this way. So I am super excited for this hero, I think she's going to be really really fun to use. I can't wait for her to come out, I can't wait to summon her. Now unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried, I could not find the video clips for the next two heroes. So you have to make do with this. So right now we have Siren, the bootleg Ariel. She is another water type, but this time she is a support hero. So let's take a look at the talent. At the start of the battle, all allies gain 30% shield based on their respective health. I'm just gonna say this right here, 100% OP meta. You can disagree with me all you want, but the fact is, the fact that she's there in your lineup means that you are almost impossible to be one-shotted. Super good for the current meta right here, and I reckon many of the meta in the future. So she is also a little bit different over here. Her normal attack doesn't actually do damage, it actually restores the health of your ally by 100% of her magic attack, plus 300. And then moving on to her first skill, restore the health by 130% of her magic attack, plus 700 to all allies, and you gain one stack of regen. So this is not anything special, most healers have something similar to this, it's some kind of heal with a debuff removal or a heal with like a shield, so there is that. So we move on to our ultimate skill, dispels two debuffs from all your allies and you give one of them Tide Wave. This is what Tide Wave does, after being attacked, counter attack the enemy to cause 400% physical or magic damage to them based on unit type. Effect will disappear after one counter. This is a pretty useful skill, along with the fact that a talent exists, you are most likely going to be able to survive one hit. So as long as your Siren can go first, put a buff on your team, on your DPS unit, then you are good to go. So not only is she against the AoE meta, she is also super strong against like Abe no Seime and uh, Medusa. Very very solid against crowd control teams. So there is one trinket that actually protects your unit from being frozen, stunned, or petrified. And I think that, that trinket really really fits her very well. As long as she is immune to these crowd control effects, she will be able to then drop her ultimate skill to cleanse your whole team of these debuffs. Definitely a mainstay. I think if I do get to summon her, I would definitely keep her in my team for a really long time. Last but not least, we have Li Bai who is a light type warrior. And Light is really starting to become one of the best elements in the game thus far. You have Joan, you have Chang'e, and you have Merlin, who are all the best of their respective classes. And now we have potentially the best warrior. So let's take a look at his absolutely interesting talent over here. When the battle starts, each ranger and assassin in your ally camp, I'm not sure what an ally camp is, I think it's in your lineup, uh, increases Levi's crit damage by 5%, and each warrior and mage increases uh, Levi's damage output by 5%, Guardian and Priests increase Levi's block by 5%. So there is that weird flexibility in building a team around Levi. And if you use Levi, Merlin, Joan, and Chang'e together, you will immediately get 10% increased damage output and 10% increased block rate. Now he is so good because of the next skills that I'm about to talk about. His normal attack actually leaves two debuffs, a Frost Mark and a Charm. And what a Frost Mark does is it with 5 stack of it, you're gonna freeze the enemy. 
and Charm obviously just decreases the damage that they do by 5% per stack. Now moving on to his first skill, deals 140% of physical attack damage to all enemies and you cause 1 layer of frost mark and 1 layer of charm. So if you use him with Abe no Semi, you are guaranteed to freeze everyone on their enemy lineup in the first turn. Yes, it is pretty similar to using a Gabriel instead of a Levi, but the thing is, Levi has a lot of damage as well. <laughs> Looking at his ultimate skill, 520% physical attack damage to a single enemy. For every layer of frost mark, this skill's crit damage increases by 10% per stack. A frozen enemy is considered 5 stacks. So with Abe no Semi and Levi together, you are sure to be able to use your ultimate skill on a frozen target on your second turn. Depending on the cooldown of his first skill, that would really determine his final standing in the game. If his first skill comes with a cooldown of like 1 or 2 turns, any cooldown at all, he's gonna be dropped to like a double S rank, but if it doesn't come with any cooldowns at all, so he can just keep spamming his AoE, definitely triple S rank. There's so much debuffs on this guy, he works so well with Gabriel because Gabriel is just gonna be able to increase the stacks of all these frost marks and charms. So there is a lot of utility on one hero, and that's what I really like about Levi. Of course, we also have to take a look at his speed. If he is slow, then he's not going to be able to perform that well. But if he's fast, then yes, he's, a he's actually going to be quite formidable. So with that said, that's the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this content. That has been seven new heroes that will be added into the game in the near future. Let me know what are your thoughts on these few characters. Are you particularly interested in any one of them? For me, I am super excited about Daphne and Freya and I can't wait to summon them. I hope I do get them. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you have not already done so. And as always, I will see you in the next video.